everybody. Welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new Brotherhood. It's a brand new everything. So here we have Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. I'm William Morris. I'm here with Eugene Morris. Hey guys, how you doing? And so, as everybody knows, Kingdom Hearts 3's DLC package came out, and uh, yeah, I got some traumatic PTSD when uh, I saw this room, because oh my god, it's Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Plus all over again. Yeah, I don't have quite the same feeling, so I didn't play that version of the game. I only played the original Kingdom Hearts 2. No, uh, but you, you still have uh, familiarity with uh, the battles in those games, and especially with Sephiroth. I do remember. Oh, yes, I remember Sephiroth well, although he wasn't in this room. He was his own thing. Yeah. Um, so now here we got uh, the first of many. We have young Xehanort. If you haven't seen Will's review of Kingdom Hearts 3, it's, uh, I think, our pinned video, so you can check that out. Some of his best work. Yeah, it's a long video too, and we filmed it at Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, it was it was beautifully done. You and uh, you and George, I believe, were yeah. the ones who were behind that. Uh, well, um, so I, I'll do, on full disclosure, I had I do have Kingdom Hearts three. I have played it. I have not beaten it. Um, I, I think the last time I left off I was on the Big Hero Six world. Not for lack of trying, but real life stuff got in the way, and that yeah. that, that put a halt on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Some good, some bad. Yeah. But uh, I imagine he'll get back into it eventually, guys. Well, I will. I will. Yeah. Uh, all right, so young Xehanort, he's, <laughs> as you can see, he's giving me the workaround. He's rocking a lot of the same moves straight out of uh, Dream Drop Distance, a lot of the same time manipulation bullcrap. Now, this is what, final form? Light form. Yes. Uh, so the How many forms does he have in this game? Uh, he has a form for every Keyblade. Pretty much. Yeah, right. every Keyblade <laughs> has a different form, and that, that's the interesting thing about the battle mechanics that people were questioning. Um, yeah, you know, a couple, a few of the try hard diehards were man, like, "That's some juggling right there, man." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like with these battles, uh, first and foremost, I I think it's going to be very clear that all the people that have been co like complaining about how Kingdom Hearts 3's combat is floaty and all that stuff. He's got two keyblades now. Is this yes? This final is form or yes. This is a uh, the Oath Keeper and the Oblivion were part of the DLC because they weren't part of the base game, and when you equip them. They allow you to go into a dual wielding form if you. Man, we're in such a different time now that these keyblades are DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Back in my day, everything was on the dish. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, Kingdom Hearts has sort of been doing this since 2002 with the final mixes, but at least you don't have to buy a new. Ooh, super move. Nice. Yeah, at least you don't have to buy a new copy of the game when it happens. Oh, yeah, now Xehanort's doing like his bullcrap stuff, and now he's midway down, so he's going into the time manipula uh, manipulation mode, so now I have to hurt his armor before I can start damaging him again, and if I don't do it in the time limit, he's going to get all his health back. Uh, straight straight from Dream Drop Distance. I hated that. I hated this fight. <laughs> Has Sora been in a death battle? Yes, he has. He was against uh, Kid Icarus, and he won. I was wondering, because... Doesn't his sword powers only work against uh, light uh, darkness? Does it? Would it work against light users or fellow? Yeah, really. Yeah, it works against anything. It's, oh, okay. It's, I, 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 get, I guess kind of like the Aurora Arts from Tales of Eternia. It's better effective against people. Ah, uh, it's hard to. To me, it's like seeing seeing Sora in a death battle is like seeing Superman in a death battle because it kind of breaks their character because he wouldn't kill anybody it, it, it or a good person. You know? <laughs> it, it does, but that's one of the reasons don't... why I don't really watch that show anymore. Yeah, you, don't, you don't take it seriously. <laughs> no, that's um, true. Like, who do you want to win a death battle? Whoever the writer wants to win. Thank uh, you. That, that's plain and simple. But yeah, as I was saying, um, a lot of people, like especially the diehards that love Tokyo Team so much and the original Kingdom Hearts 2 gameplay, complained so much about Kingdom Hearts 3's battle system but I think that's mostly because we didn't have any challenges that really forced you to get good at the mechanics. He seems to be more of an aerial fighter. I don't see a lot of ground attacks. With Not him. as so maybe much. That, maybe that goes with the floaty aspect you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, now that I got him down to his last pinch of health, he's got to pull a desperation move. So. Oh, of course. These are Kingdom Hearts bosses, man. So you know they're going to have to they always do that stuff. It reminds me of the dude I fought at Beast. You fight at Beast Castle in Kingdom Hearts Two. What's his name? Zaldin. Yeah. yeah, man, he was. We, that was one of the more difficult boss fight or, or organization fights for that. Uh, it that it really was. It, that was a. That was one of the places that was well known for its difficulty spike. So, Press triangle. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, uh, so young Xehanort has been defeated. So now we're up next with Replico from. Uh, how do you feel about these boss rush? Because this is basically a boss rush, right? Uh, how do you feel about this being uh, converted to DLC? 
Well, it's just like Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Plus, so I, I'm fine with it. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the, the, I guess it's the way the industry is nowadays. you got to have some sort of DLC. You can't have everything right out the, yeah, right out the back. People <laughs> have... It's a controversial matter, but I have no problem with DLC as it's done right. Capcom has made an example of how to do DLC wrong, and they kind of messed it up for everybody. So they can put on locked disc content, make you pay for colors of characters. Well, yeah, I mean, Fighter. it's one thing when it's uh, on the disc, but it's locked away. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the, the Square Enix Tomb Raider games, like all that DLC is actually stuff that's made after it, right? Yeah, yeah. like all of this stuff is... Yeah, so that, that's that's that. actually... That's fine. I yeah, mean, like a lot of what you're seeing here in Kingdom Hearts Remind is taken from feedback from over a year that the game's been out. So it's fixed a lot of the problems that people have had with the base game. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, I'll just be honest. Yeah, R you're fine Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, yeah, Riku. Yeah, Riku. Yeah. Now, he largely does use a lot of the same moves from Kingdom Hearts 1, but clearly he's on steroids. I yeah. still don't truly have an effect. I can't tell you too much about an effective strategy with fighting him, except for sticking and moving. He does have this weird barrier thing, like the Reflega barrier that appears. And when that happens, you want to get out of dodge and then quickly get back in, because he leaves himself wide open as soon as it dispels. And I, one of my first initial strategies with fighting him was, like, maybe I could use those mines that he's throwing out against him. Maybe if I trigger them to explode near him, he'll get caught in the blast. And it, sometimes it felt like it worked, but <laughs> other times it clearly didn't. Riku is one of those really weird ones where, yeah, as you can see, you really got to stick and move. He's not going to give you many chances for opportunity. And that's the thing about all of these particular boss fights is that they are really going to work the the Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay mechanical system so that th there's no getting by with this. You're either skilled enough to get these victories or you're not. And the only way you're going to... Yeah, see, here's the barrier. Get out of the way. Get back. Yeah, and <laughs> that, that that's your moment. But if you're too far, it's, it ain't going to happen because they're only going to give you a small window to, to rebound. All right. Um, and yeah, like and people forget that Kingdom Hearts 2, when it first came out, the vanilla version... It was looked at in a similar fashion, where the gameplay was thought of to be too easy, where it was tap X to win. Um, it, it was a gross oversimplification, sure, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until the Final Mix Plus versions of those games came out with all these super bosses that made people had to really get good at the mechanics and learn the innards of, of how the game worked that suddenly people love the game now. And that's why Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Plus is the one that everybody holds close to their heart and they remember. Well, that's what's love. on the... Um... Um, what do you call it? the collection? Yeah, the PS3 they, collection. That's right. The HD collections have. I have those, by the way. I, I have both versions. Yeah. Oh uh, god. One, 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 four, two, <laughs> yeah. So it, I feel like essentially those were DLC back in the day. It was. Just it it was, but DLC wasn't possible then, so it's, right. you had to buy a brand new copy of the game. But we didn't get them until the HD collection, so that's why people are very much against the DLC. Well, I wouldn't say they're against the DLC in Kingdom Hearts Three. They're just. DLC ever since has always been controversial because of how it's been used as a tool to milk people for more money. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> yeah, okay, so when Riku goes into this mode in, in that where he's zip zop zoopity bopping all across the screen. So many, so many anime bullshit going on <laughs> on the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, Riku is untouchable when he does that. And the only thing you can do is dodge. And I have found an effective way to dodge it. Uh, which is blocking the moves when he's, like, zipping at you and then get out of the way of the mines. And so, <laughs> at this point, I'm like, screw it. I, I'll take the easy out. I gotta hit him with a shot lock if I can, because I'm, right. you know, like, he's down to nothing. I just want to hit him with something. Get, <laughs> just, just like, oh, he's blocking everything. You know, oh, screw it. I'll, I'll max shot lock on him. Block this, motherfucker. <laughs> that was a function that came from 3D, is that correct? Dream, dream uh, no, no, Birth by Sleep. Oh, oh, that's correct. I forgot. Yeah, Birth by Sleep. That's the one. Hmm. All right. So now that Riku Replica is taken care of, now we have Syax from Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm -hmm. uh, can you feel it? The moon's power. Moon, shine down. <laughs> moon, shine down. <laughs> I'm sure all of you remember this guy. He was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, in this uh, version, now, what's interesting is he was also in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix's super boss room like this. Mm -hmm. But arguably, he was probably the easiest one. Okay. Now, he's probably one of the hardest. Right. Yep. <laughs> he goes crazy with the Berserker barrages that he has. And what's maddening about it is that 9 out of 10 of his attacks are unblockable. But 
we're going to try to block them anyway, which is a problem because that's instinctive. <laughs> like, they're unblockable, but we try to block them anyway. There you go. <laughs> and, and that's a problem. So we have to, I, I constantly have to remember to try to avoid stuff. Cause, and when he goes into this maddening rage from the moon, because the moon makes him horny, <laughs> the only thing you can do is try to break him out of it or avoid him entirely. But my biggest advice for any of these fights End them as soon as possible. Try to get the fights over with as quick as possible. The longer you are in the fight with them, the more opportunities you they have to kill you. Do you get your health restored when you start a new battle? Yes, you do. Um, plus, I have I've got the magic, so I've got cure. Okay. Uh, but if you remember, cure it drains everything. So I have a stock of items. Yeah. To, so you have to wait until it re uh, re get reopens itself or goes down. So. Yeah. yeah. So I have a stock of items on hand as well, in, which I like to use in between combos. Using items in any Kingdom Hearts game has always been a risk in the heat of battle because it takes like a half second or two seconds to trigger once you hit the items. Mm -hmm. And that's two seconds too long. <laughs> it, 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 it takes a fraction of that for a hit to get in. Um, heal, the, the cure heal is different, but it's, it's instant, especially if you got like things like Leaf Bracer and that prevent oh, it from he's being... he's going invincibility, you know what that yeah, means. Yeah, he's going crazy again, so... I hate it when he does that move. With, with, with that move, I have found no effective counter. The only thing, yeah, casting thunder, like, maybe is the only thing, because I can still hit him from a distance or tag him. Yeah, it's one of those, I'm gonna do whatever I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, and he's got, he's got those twirling blades that are flying at me, too, so he's got... Ugh. <laughs> it's like, Psyx, please, stop! I can't hit him! And that Berserker gauge up in the corner, like, I gotta wait until that drains, or I gotta hit him in between. It's like, you're asking too much of me, game. I'm just one man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's so much stuff going on. I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> uh, I am trying to fight for my life. That's all I can tell you. Jeez. Trying to avoid, like, Largely, most of these fights is all about blocking and dodging and waiting for that one moment to, to, <laughs> to punish. That's, uh, that's Kingdom Hearts. It really is. Yeah, and so uh, going back to what I said about the mechanics, I feel like all the people that had a lot of things to complain about for Kingdom Hearts 3's battle mechanics because it's Osaka team, it's not Tokyo team, I think in a while from now we're probably going to start hearing less and less about that because for the first time, and I think it started with when Critical Mode was added, we're now finally being forced to utilize all of the gameplay mechanics that Kingdom Hearts 3 offered that we didn't take advantage of. Hmm. And uh, even a, a girl that I like, uh, Super Butter Buns, who you're, yeah. you're, you're familiar with, uh, she did a uh, compilation of her playing Critical Mode where she had to do the same thing and try out different tactics. And yay, we finally got rid of Syax. Hmm. Uh, she, like, uh, she was using the Hercules uh, weapon that turns into a chaos shield and it blocks everything. And when it blocks so much, you can build up power with it and do like a whole bunch of punches. Right. And again, those are mechanics that you would never think to do and yeah. probably didn't even know that they were even there. Because the game was never hard enough that you were forced to try to utilize all these things. Yeah. But there's so many hidden abilities and so many hidden mechanics that Kingdom Hearts 3 has to offer that I feel like now that we're being forced to explore and people are going to be like, oh, Kingdom Hearts 3 was secretly brilliant this whole time. I don't know if Kingdom Hearts 3 is a game that a casual fan can get into as much. Because uh, it's just, oh, hey, there she is. <laughs> Larcina. Because it's one of those things like, okay, I just want to play the game, beat it play story beat it and just be on my way well you're missing out on a whole bunch of stuff that is that that the game offers when you do that so you really have to if you really if you're gonna play kingdom hearts 3 uh, i'm saying just you really have to spend a lot of time at it and just really you know devote a lot of time to it to really get the full experience i agree uh, while the story for kingdom hearts is definitely a huge draw for a lot of people especially if you've been committed um it's still a fun action adventure rpg that is a lot of fun to play. There's so much to explore. There's so many gameplay elements to explore, worlds to explore, things you haven't seen, post-game stuff especially, and things like this. And I will say this, though, especially for, at least for the, from my perspective on the old Kingdom Hearts games, that there always seem to be a, a real uh, difficulty spike where you fight these Disney bosses and they're pretty much a piece of cake. And then you run into these organization members, and then they just mop the floor with you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the difficulty level just kind of spikes real quickly on you. One of the biggest difficulty spikes that happened what happened in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Plus. 
um, when you first get to the world that never was and you're on your way to the castle to fight like the rest of the organization members like Zigbar, Syax, Semnus, yeah. before you even get there, you had that cutscene where Roxas shows up and there's like a little cutscene battle. But in the Final Mix version, they actually made that a fight. Mm. And Roxas, as everybody will think, <laughs> was the hardest difficulty spike, and you haven't even gotten to the castle. He's so hard. He's actually harder than the final boss. <laughs> Why do they do that? <laughs> so it, it's weird, because like, people who never played the Final Mix and got to that part were suddenly hit with a boss fight that they don't remember. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? I gotta fight him now? And he's harder than the final fights? Like... Because after you get through Roxas, the rest of the fights are pretty much cake. I see she's going Berserker Rage right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Larxene, the, the sadist. Let's go, bub. <laughs> What's crazy is uh, she's probably not that hard. Well, you're pretty much beating her up right now. There she yep, goes. There she goes. Yeah, she's arguably the easiest out of well, the she is set. a woman. Oh, 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 wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, uh, my wife would kill me if she heard that. <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman. They go down easy. <laughs> We're just kidding. <laughs> I am. All right, so now we have Zigbar, a.k.a. Lushu, as he's now. So known. with his guy gun weapon. Oh, yeah, you, I'm sure you remember him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, he's made appearances in Pretty much every, everything. <laughs> every game since two. Uh, so yeah, he's known as Zigbar, also uh, known as Brig in Birth by Sleep. But now at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, it turns out he was Lushu from Daybreak Town. They, they were, so he's been around far longer than most people. Uh, so Zigbar... Yeah, and he fights upside down. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, because he's weird dimensional stuff. Zigbar is an interesting beast, because clearly, as you can see by the big portal in the front of the stage, I can't really get to him too much, so there's going to be a lot of blocking and dodging going into this fight. The, the fight really speaks for itself on how to do ow, ow, ow. It really does speak for itself. you got to stick your move, plan your attacks accordingly. If you remember how he fought in Kingdom Hearts 2, especially if you fought him in critical mode, this fight won't be too difficult. He's got He's got this one gimmick part right here where... I have to attack him. Just It's like a quick draw thing. <laughs> gotcha. So, any fun memories? Oh, yeah. A lot. You know, I, uh, I, I think about Kingdom Hearts 2 a lot when I think about uh, this game. A lot of us were hoping that Sephiroth would have made a return. Oh, of course. I, I, who, who doesn't love Sephiroth? <laughs> Sephiroth is, is, is just amazing. <laughs> Remember how much uh, trouble Sephiroth gave you in Kingdom Hearts 2? Yep. How good did it feel to finally beat him? Fantastic. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a thing where I just kept leveling up. I just went somewhere. I, I leveled up all the way to level 99 to finally get my chance to beat him. And when I finally got him, you know, and I got rewarded with... I must admit, you are very skilled. But it looks like Cloud is the only one that can end me. <laughs> like, of course. The thing about that, though, is that you also have to keep in mind that the Final Fantasy characters that appear in the Kingdom Hearts series aren't really their true selves. They're more Disney-fied or, you know, it's not really their true essence. You could argue it's the same thing that Disney does with all their characters, because there's different continuities with all of them. I uh, disagree with that. I mean, when you see a Disney... Uh, level, all the characters in here are basically acting, acting as they do in the film. I'm talking about, like, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Donald Duck. No, they, I still think they have the same personalities. It's just that, um, um, you know, they have more of a warrior kind of uh, edge to them. Um, but, you know, that's fine. I mean, you're not playing, like, the exact version of these Final Fantasy characters, but it, it is nice to see that they are there. And uh, you're playing, like, a... Uh, a version, but not the, the classic version. <laughs> oh, because, part... because Sephiroth is not a dark shadow of Cloud. I mean, Sephiroth is very much his own character. <laughs> well, yeah, he kind of became sort of Cloud's shadow in Advent Children, and therefore, because he's like a memory that haunts him. Yeah, but I'm, I'm speaking about more the original. Sephiroth was hat was big. All I'm saying is that the character in Se uh, here is very different from the what he is in his uh, regular uh, original. How about that Final Fantasy VII remake? Final Fantasy. Oh man, I'm so upset that's been that's been delayed. <laughs> yeah, I want that so I want to play that. So but it's like three months. <laughs> like I, I guess I can wait. Although it, it's a weird delay, like three months, because like how like what happens in three months? Well, I, I guess they. Uh, 
I don't know. Because all the discs have to be made and shipped out by then. You know, it's Final Fantasy. We've been waiting for forever for it. We'll wait a little longer. So, <laughs> like, of course, everybody's biggest question is like, how many discs is it going to be? Because we know that Final Fantasy VII has been split up into multiple parts. Oh yeah. <laughs> and some people are like 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 scared that it'll be like five and i'm like uh i think three should be like the the we'll max be playing this final fantasy 7 remake for the next 10 years <laughs> probably oh god zigbar still giving me trouble don't block him in. <laughs> but i don't i'm okay because there is another game that's coming out that i'm really looking forward to and it's actually ironically it's coming out on that same day as my birthday oh yeah uh, <laughs> Dark Siders 4. Oh, wow. <laughs> I haven't even heard about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the fourth horseman. <laughs> wow, that, that must be so under the radar. <laughs> it probably is. I, I barely heard it myself. I've like, seen like, only one trailer for it. Because <laughs> I've been seeing trailers for Resident Evil 3. I've been seeing trailers for Final Fantasy 7. Which looks like, amazing, by the way. Yeah, the, the Kingdom Hearts Remind DLC, like Dark Siders. <laughs> by, yeah. by the way, Dark Siders 4 is coming. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> it's, I hope it sells. <laughs> like that should be the final game, though, right? Uh, should be. I don't see any reason to continue after after this. Yeah, there were only four horsemen, right? Yeah. Unless they want to do a fifth one where you play where it's a combo platter. That would probably be the only reason why. It, 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 it's it's a it's a niche cult thing, uh, but uh, you know I, I'm just glad that it's getting represented. Well, it's a miracle that the game's even alive at all because the original yeah. studio is like long gone. They're long gone, right? <laughs> yeah, it's same. It's kind of the same thing I had with Shenmue Three. It's like, dude, it was a miracle you got this at all. <laughs> so why are you banking on sequels? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, finally. Got him now. Yeah. Like, why are you banking on sequels just to end the series? You got one more chance. I'll be putting everything I can into there. <laughs> so we got four down. So now we come to the first uh, major one over here. Like, well, are, you, are you changing styles like Dante? <laughs> Gunslinger. <laughs> Quicksilver. <laughs> Pretty much. Swordmaster. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they took a page from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. <laughs> well, well, well. A blast from the past. Oh, yeah. Every light must fade. Every heart return to darkness. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm still... Still the most epic boss fight. It, it's still a great one. What still bugs me is, even though it's... Me, the... Donald, Goofy, and Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> or Bambi. <laughs> well, me, I use Tinkerbell because she was constantly casting heal on me. <laughs> yeah, she, she definitely is. Like, Tinkerbell and Bambi were, without question, the best uh, summons. Bambi killed this guy, didn't he? <laughs> no, in uh, Marlu Marluxia, because Bambi could, Bambi could attack Yeah, in, in the second one. <laughs> That's embarrassing. A deer steps on you. Oh! <laughs> Do enough slates with him. Um, but yeah, I I loved his first voice actor in the first game, and I I still can't get used to his new one. Hmm. Uh, well, it's gonna happen when you when you have a series that extends as long as it has. You're gonna have some recast. I'm still amazed that Haley Joel Osment is still doing Sora, and and very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Riku. He still sounds the same. Haley Joel Osment's the only one that went through puberty over the course of that time. Like, dude's like 30 now. So I guess he doesn't need the uh, big demon behind him anymore. The Guardian? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny thing how that ended up being Terra the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so many people were vindicated when that theory ended up being right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like, at any point, people pointed out, like, it is so weird seeing Ansem without the Come Guardian, like, hanging yeah, up behind him, like, yeah. Submit! <laughs> but, oh, I'm sure we'll see it. So, Ansem, he... I want to say he does rock some of the same moves from Kingdom Hearts 1, but obviously without the, the Guardian, like, <laughs> defending him, he's... He's a little crazy. <laughs> oh, great, thanks. Ansem, please chill. Oh yeah, yeah. This is one of those. He's gonna suck you in, so get out of the way. That's, that's when it rains and pours. Yeah, I, I don't know what that does, but it can't be good. <laughs> right. Good lord, you just summoned supernova. <laughs> Eat it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Yeah, it does kind of. I do wonder why uh, the Oblivion and the Oathkeeper Keyblades weren't part of the base game. Because they, they've been always part of Sora's arsenal. Like, eventually. Because mm -hmm. you always get the Oathkeeper from Kyrie and... 
Jesus. Uh, uh, so now I'm dual wielding against him. <laughs> I love dual wielding. I'm, I'm so glad they brought that back. Here we go again. <laughs> it's focus time. Damn it! <laughs> that didn't work, I see. <laughs> I tried to stall for time. <laughs> That's another thing that I try to do is like if you ow ow oh this crap I don't know how to avoid this. Like he just has these random those balls that just well, you were fortunate to be able to heal at that moment. I I really was. Like sometimes it's better to be lucky than to be good. True. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I try to use these super moves to like draw for time. Just. To, <laughs> Did you ever use the, uh, the... Oh, you beat him. Nice. Thank Did God. you ever use, like, the friends assist? Like, where you have characters, like, coming out and doing things for you, like Ariel? And... Actually, you want to know something? Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're going to find out very soon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> very soon, because uh, that's another thing uh, about the mechanics uh, of this game. All right, so now we've, we've beaten one whole side. So now we have another side to deal with, and I guess, I guess we'll start... Uh, all the way with the beginning one over here. I was dreading this fight, Vanitas. Okay. From Birth by Zen, because... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured he was going to be a royal pain in the ass. And while he wasn't easy, because none of these fights are easy. Were those homing missiles? <laughs> they might as well be. It's uh. like Sonic Blade. It's Sonic Blade. Right. Yeah, I found Vanitas to not be as difficult as <clears throat> I thought he was going to He's definitely not as hard as his super form in Birth by Sleep, because Birth by Sleep just gave you limited moves to begin with. All right. Uh, the critical mode there was insane. <laughs> insane! <laughs> the critical modes in these games are insane! <laughs> uh, so yeah, thankfully Vanitas isn't as hard as I thought he was going to be. Mm. Um, it didn't take me too long to figure out how to... Put him in his corner. Was this your favorite game of 2019? Yes. Cool. Mine was uh, Devil May Cry 5. Devil which is Cry essentially the same kind of thing. Uh, high die octane action games. <laughs> well, one right next to the other, it's like, you're getting the same thing here. Right, basically. <laughs> Except in Devil May Cry, it's this all the time. All the time. <laughs> you're fighting for your life all the time. <laughs> Whereas Kingdom Hearts games are generally smooth There's sailing. Life in, the life in a grain of sand. <laughs> oh. V. V for Vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> to see a world in a grain of sand and a desert in a wild flower. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. <laughs> well done. <laughs> like, I, I partly remember that from the first Tomb Raider movie. Yes. Oh, yes. That's actually, that's true, too. Well, I guess uh, uh, your second choice would be the Resident Evil 2 remake, right? Yeah, Resident Evil 2 was a fantastic remake. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, Capcom did something right. It's been a while. <laughs> so after Resident Evil 3, do you think uh, they're going to remake Code Veronica? Yeah, I was thinking about, like, after Resident Evil 3, could they do a remake of Resident Evil 4? And I'm like, why would they? <laughs> but, you know, Code Veronica... I would love to see that, because that has Claire and Chris as the main characters. Yeah, so I would... That, great. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Code Veronica redone. Yeah, um, take what you will about any of my fighting styles when it comes to defeating Vanitas. Like, it, hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. The, the, now he's at the point where he starts doing crazy attacks. Yeah, like, uh, the only thing I can say, guys, is take every advantage you can get. Like, use any buff, use anything. I'm not really using any buffs, but I know that there's, like, little chef Remy, his cuisine stuff that you can take advantage of mm -hmm. to give you some status buffs. I don't know how effective it is, because I've never... I. I've never had to use it, and that was one of the things about base Kingdom Hearts 3, is that when it first came out, all you had was beginner, normal, and proud, and proud wasn't really all that difficult, and that was one of my complaints when I did the review of the game, mm -hmm. is that standard wasn't wasn't really hard as it shouldn't be, and proud wasn't much tougher, and there was really no reason to utilize a lot of the gameplay mechanics that Kingdom Hearts 3 offered. Like, form changes, like, sure, they were cool, but... You seldom needed to use them. Nothing was really so hard that you needed to. And Little Chef's cooking, where you could get yourself status buffs, just felt like overkill. Yeah. Because like, you're never in a position where you have to use this stuff. But, yeah, Vanitas is down. 
But now, for the, now again, broken record, for the first time with this DLC, we are really put in positions where we're going to have to take advantage of every everything that we have. So if you can make something good out of Remy's status Well, class. I remember when I first started playing Kingdom Hearts 3 and you were watching, uh, uh, you said there was a bit, that, that there's more... The, the gummy ship levels is really... Oh, hey, homeboy, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Terra Xehanort. Terra, Terra Nord, yeah. Yeah, yeah Terra Nord. <laughs> yeah, with his red lightsaber. Uh, you, you were, there, this game had more of an emphasis on the gummy uh, ship stuff. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Do I have to spend, like, hours going around collecting materials to get to get the stuff that I need? But you were like, no, you don't have to. It's just... You, it, you could still do... Beat the game without it. Yeah, it helps, but... What's there he is? Yeah, yeah. Now Terranort's got him. Yeah. Uh, what the thing about the gummy ship is, and I, and I'm kicking. Like, oh god dang it! Well, I just want to hit things with my keyblade. I don't want to just spend hours flying around a gummy ship, <laughs> blasting rocks. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a, there's a really good lord. It's, this is like a this is psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like ooh, ooh, I can't hurt him. All I can we do got is we got all seventies up in here. <laughs> So yeah, now Terranord's got the got the Guardian. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, going to the gummy ship, and I'm I'm so upset that I didn't bring this up, but the gummy ship uh, part in this game was largely handled by the people who did the game of Einhander for the PS1. Okay. And that would explain why the Einhander ship, and there's even a secret boss from Einhander. <laughs> out, out space. So like, if anything, that's the big cameo of the game is that there's a lot of Einhander love, and I know that when Nate saw that. He was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great when you have a, a moment like that where it's... Yeah, Einhander's like one of Nate's like top favorite games. And so when I show him in Kingdom Hearts 3, you can play as the Einhander ship. And one of the secret bosses is the Schwarzgeist, which is like a super boss from the Einhander game. Completely redone in like modern 3D graphics with the music from Einhander. When he, when he saw that, I'll never forget it. He was sitting next to me and I just showed him that as a surprise. He didn't know what was coming. And he was just like, oh! Because <laughs> he's been wanting a remake or a sequel to Einhander for the better half of two decades mm. and the fact that he kingdom hearts 3 is the closest thing that he's getting, getting to it right I hear it's it. just like oh it's right there <laughs> but yeah the the uh i would say that the kingdom hearts 3 finally got the gummy ship perfected where you can just explore outer space to your heart's content right and explore the reaches of space fight if you want to or don't Okay. And blast rocks for materials if you want to. The materials are good for upgrading the keyblades, which is another thing Kingdom Hearts 3 actually did. Uh, it solved the keyblade, keyblade problem. Because in every Kingdom Hearts game prior to this one, you usually had a favorite keyblade that you stuck to because, yeah. it, because it outshined all the rest. Yeah. Um, but now every keyblade has a significant use. They all have their own form changes that do different things. They all have their own stats that are that make them really good at something similar. You can switch them on the fly in combos in combat. Like you could like something you could never do before. Right. <laughs> yeah. That that's fan that's fantastic. All right, now trying to get them. <laughs> like, it, 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 that's always how it gets. Like you get them down to their last and bit. And then of they start getting all. Now they're impossible to hit. Impossible to hit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Like, come on, just whack him, hit him a few times. Bam! There we go. And there you go. And Terranor is Terranor gone. Terranor is gone. So who's next? <laughs> so yeah, when you get him down to the low half, even Kingdom Hearts 2, get him halfway down to the health, now they start going into what was called like desperate yeah, mode. Yeah, desperate mode, right. Oh, a scythe. Oh, great. Here. I know this person. <laughs> Hi, Marluxia. My god, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Back in the Game Boy Advance days, we didn't have dubbing, so of course I called him Marluxia. <laughs> like, we, didn't, we didn't know all these characters, how their pronunci pronunciations were to be. I thought Marluxia, Namin. <laughs> I didn't know it was Namine. <laughs> like, we have to help Namin. <laughs> or Namin, or... But let us know in the comments, like, uh, when you guys played uh, Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance back in the day, what what pronunciations were you giving these characters' names? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Marlu... Mar I was about to say Marluxia again. <laughs> Marluxia. <laughs> Marluxia. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marluxia largely fights similar to how he did in the final mix of Kingdom Hearts 2, where he's... You'll, you'll notice in a second when he starts pulling out some of the crap, and he's got, like, the doomsday clock that he's gonna put on, uh... That he's gonna put on top of you, so he's... And that's always fun. That means like, if he's got like a number counter of 15 on top of you, that means he's only got to hit you 15 times, regardless of your health. Yeah. 
And uh, I, hate, I hate that. I think, oh, here it is. Subscribe to the Brother of the Gaming. <laughs> what? <laughs> 15. Ah, uh, fun. 14. 14. Damn it. 13. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> please, please. Yeah, so now he's got the armor thing. Yeah, that's I see another, that. Yeah, that's another thing Kingdom Hearts 3 added that now that now we've got armor class so they can no sell your moves. That's fun. Yeah, I always love that. You know, that's that, that's just something that comes with a lot of games no matter what it is when they no sell your 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 moves. There's no stagger. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Lucia, please. Get, broke through it. Nice. Yeah, dispel. Get that crap off of me. I don't know how practical it would be to fight with a sight though. Um, you have to be super skilled to, to use that. Well, yeah, I imagine you can't just pick one up and be god with it. Yeah. Suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it. So he basically has like a million keyblades that he's fighting with Sora. Yeah, it's kind of like how Noctis like pulls all those swords out of like thin air. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he took a page from that. There you go. Sticking and moving. That is the best... <laughs> That's the best I, uh, strat I can give. Like, hit him, dodge. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, crap. Oh, he's back in armor, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, every single one of these boss characters has a teleport. Oh. <laughs> Everyone has a teleport. Yeah, yeah. They, they can't just stand still. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you, you get your opening, you get your super move out, you get your form change, and it's like, boosh, I'm across the field now, so that's gonna, now it's gonna take half your game just to get over there. Right. And, then the, <laughs> and of course, by the time you get over there, boosh, gone again. <laughs> I swear, it's like, no. Did you subscribe to the Brother of Gaming yet? <laughs> I love how his scythe was, like, going back and forth behind him, like a... <laughs> yeah, so now he's got the Dropping Doomsday, axe. now he's got a Doomsday clock on me, so okay. now I have 70, like... I've got that much time to hit him. And of course, now he's impossible to hit. <laughs> this is the part of the Marluxia fight that has ended it for a lot of people. He does he does this, and then the fight is just over for everybody. Right, right, right. <laughs> but Oh, you got him! Yeah, it's like, thank you. You are lucky. <laughs> Sometimes it's better be lucky than good. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no kidding. Oh, I'm oh right. great. A book. No card no it's a card the first to it's, run out of it's time gambit. <laughs> <laughs> the first to run out of time is the loser hi luxord hi luxie how you doing <laughs> or uh, did you know that in kingdom hearts 2, oh yeah i remember this fight <laughs> in kingdom hearts 2 we know his name was luxord but not once did they ever say his name out loud in that game really no like we we knew his name because it always said it up there when you fight him and uh -huh. it even said it in the strategy guide but no one in the game actually called him out by name until Kingdom Hearts 3. So all these years, once again, like Chain of Memories, we've been getting his name wrong. It's not Luxord, it's Luxord. Why can't you make it something that's more easier to understand, like Larry or Tim or <laughs> Susan? <laughs> because we gotta. Oh, wait, shut up. Yeah, be, uh, I'll shut up now. <laughs> well, because we gotta have the sigil in his name, the X. <laughs> right, if it's like. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Luxord, uh, I'm going to call him Luxord. Guys, I I've been calling him Luxord for years. I'm not going to stop now. He's He is the most gimmicky fight of them all. Natu it, wouldn't be a, uh, it wouldn't be a Luxord fight. Well, it's a fight. card game. Yeah, it wouldn't be a Luxord fight if it wasn't gimmicky. It's a card game. Yeah, like, uh, as you can see, there's two gauges up there. The idea is that you have to damage him to lower his gauge, and he's going to lower your gauge <clears throat> a lot easier than you will ever his, because you got to be able to find... You gotta find those cards, you gotta find the card with him in it, in order to break him out of it, and of course I'm doing chip damage to him, regardless. Yes. Um, so, so he, yeah, he's not one of those fights that you can just wail on like the other ones. Granted, you couldn't really wail on them either, you had to find an opening. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he's very much, you're not gonna be able to hit him, period. Take a card, any card. <laughs> you'll, you'll never be able to hit him, period, unless you beat his little mini games that he's gonna constantly throw out throw out at you. So like, time for another game, Sora. So, so yeah, he's got several mini games in here. One where he's gonna throw a crap ton of cards on the ground, like that, and then he's gonna hide amongst them. And the best way that I can say to fight this one is to make it so that he doesn't throw as many cards on the ground. That way, you have little room for error. There he is. Um, and the best way to do that is 
he's he he'll kind of telegraph when he's about to do it when he f starts throwing a lot of cards at you because if if you choose to avoid the cards to, instead of blocking them, those cards are going to land on the floor and then it's just th that's many that, that's more cards that you're going to have to deal with. Hmm. Uh, so block the cards instead of avoiding them. That way you'll have less cards to deal with on the floor. He'll have less cards to hide in front of. I'm saying cards a lot. <laughs> this I I hated this part. This is his desperate attack so now i have to i have to try to find him throughout all of these cards and i am limited on time and of course he's gonna attack me during all of this it's a very stressful part because it's super stressful these fights are very stressful just to be able to fight and get good enough to learn a pattern and having to die repeatedly just getting this far alone you're on edge so he the keeps fact disappearing when you approach him yeah, so when you get the when you get this far, you're already on edge, and when you're asked, and not not even asked, when you're forced to learn a new mechanic and a, a new mini game on the fly, all of a sudden, it's a lot. <laughs> like, right. Like, and I, I've seen Disney brain games. I'm, I'm proven stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I am proven to be slow in the head. So like it it's it's too much. Don't feel bad if you didn't get. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen, guys, if you don't have, Disney if you have a Disney Plus, go to National Geographic and watch Brain Games. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a great show, but it, it will make you feel stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, unless you're like, I have been able, I have been smart enough to figure a couple of the things out before they before they tell me about them, and they do statistically say that there will be a small handful of you that have the brain power to do that. So after experiencing that show, it's like, oh, no wonder some people are better at things like this than I am, because they're more prone to figuring th their brain is more Did savvy. Did you just go into rage mode? Yes. I, I didn't mean to do that. It, it, it's one of those accidents where it's like the triangle button. <laughs> oh, crap. I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, unfortunately, Kingdom Hearts does have a habit of like doing that thing where they assign several mechanics to the same button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yes, it, it was worse in Kingdom Hearts 2, all the way, where you think you're going to do a reaction command, but you instead do a buddy attack, and it's like, god damn it. Or or you might accidentally do a form change, and you didn't mean to. Right. It's like, ah, I didn't mean to press that. Uh, so, yes, now we're down to the last hint. So I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still trying to find this guy amongst all these cards, and if I fail it, then he's pretty much going to automatically win and lower my gauge to nothing, and there's, there's pretty much no returning from that. Uh... <laughs> and of course I'm really bad at dodging right now because I'm under a lot of stress <laughs> it's like I'm, I don't have time to dodge effectively I gotta find him where is he camera like damn it <laughs> like I am frantically trying to get to him like oh where'd he go I it's so easy to fail this and he, he he starts out by like immediately finally like, yeah like do you know the rules and uh, like I win and it's, like yes, finally. <laughs> I figured out how to beat it. You guys are not alone. These, these fights are stressful. Hmm. Oh god. Oh god. Heal. Heal. Like how horrible would that be? Like to do all that just to. And he doesn't even kill me with like the the gauge that he has above me. He just beats me the old fashioned way. <laughs> so yes. Again, like, oh, that's all I had to do. Beat him. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. Again, right here where he's like throwing a lot of the cards at you. Like try to block those if you can. So. There's less less of them on the floor. <laughs> I, I would prefer it when he does matches like these, so I can just hit these ones. Uh, and of course, I get bad example. I messed it up. <laughs> uh, some, I also like how sometimes they try to give you hints <laughs> on the left. Like, hey, stupid, up here. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that even at the game over screen, they give you hints, and but uh, some of them are so stupid. It's like in order to defeat Luxord or him. <laughs> You have to find the find them in the card. Like, thank you. <laughs> no, no, really. Yeah, like this is a bad position to be in right now. There's too many cards. Mega on Man, the field. Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, good. I managed to find them all. Where are you? Gotcha. Yeah, you never want that many cards on the field. It's too easy to mess that up. Hmm. Ah, oh, the chip damage is annoying. It really is. It's like, it, it's amazing how you'll notice that if he hits me. My my gauge up there is gonna go down super easily, but I do chip damage. That's not fair. Uh, you are. <laughs> this is Kingdom Hearts. This series is 
for babies. It shouldn't yeah, be this hard. <laughs> all right. No, no, not at all. <laughs> it's got Disney in it. It's got Donald and Goofy and Mickey Mouse. Why is this game so hard? <laughs> <laughs> this is like Pokemon. This is a man's game. This is a man's game. <laughs> like all you kids with your Call of Duties and your Fortnites and your guns and you're killing people. This is a real man's game. <laughs> so I've heard there's a rumor going around that the reboot trilogy is going to get a fourth game. Uh, Tomb Raider? Yeah. Really? That's uh, what I heard. That's the rumor. Yeah, that's an interesting rumor because I, oh, yeah, that was a lucky guess right there. I didn't mm -hmm. know what card he was in. Uh, Oh, got him, got him, get got him, 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 get him. Yeah! Thank Good God. Good job. Because I was hearing some people say that the reboot trilogy was done. I don't know. I heard, and then I heard all of a sudden there's there's talks about another game, a sequel to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, you so, know what? At this point, I'll, if I see it, I'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> like, rumors. It's Tomb Raider. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah. fact, I, I, I am too old and too tired to get into stupid fan wars about, oh, it's the reboot or the classic. Just give me something. <laughs> Hey, man sex. Hey, man sex. <laughs> man sex. <laughs> Guard. Oh, yeah, I remember him. And his snazzy coat. He had. <laughs> Embrace. Yeah, you remember his snazzy coat he had, right? Oh, yeah, the, the white. The white. white. Oh, yeah. Uh, re re real fashion mogul, mogul, mogul right there. <laughs> yeah, how much you want to bet, like. <laughs> like, Zemnis. Like Zemnis. <laughs> <laughs> like Xemnas uses the best shampoos and the best conditioners. <laughs> they all do, man. You got to. <laughs> you know the thing about Kingdom Hearts three is that this is a fan. Th you know, at this point, your opinion on Kingdom Hearts is pretty much set in stone. You know, you're either gonna love it or you don't. If you love Kingdom Hearts, you're gonna love Kingdom Hearts three. If you don't like the series, this is not gonna convert you. Oh no, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts three. Is for it, the fans. Yeah, it's it's just like Metal Gear Solid Four. Yes, and I think I've made this comparison before. Like you can, in a very weird, interesting way, you can make the connections from Metal Gear Solid and Kingdom Hearts. They're practically identical. Mm -hmm. Like you've got the creator who's helming it and the mastermind behind it all. They're the narrative pushes forward with each sequel, so it's not like you can just jump in anywhere. And the they like, they have that one game in the series. That is solely dedicated to if you're a fan. Like, right. And Metal Gear Solid 4 is that game. Kingdom Hearts 3 is the, that game. God, <laughs> at this point, oh, we're raging again. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I'll take it. <laughs> heal me! <laughs> Get the heal! <laughs> Xemnas was a real tough fight in Dream Drop Distance, of all things. Like, as your flesh bears the sigil. So your name shall be known as that of a recusant. I hated that fight. Mm. Like, I, I don't know why I, I struggled with that so much and not against his final boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's like he, he got some upgrades. <laughs> He's throwing buildings at me. <laughs> oh yeah, that was pretty epic though. <laughs> Sora, are you certain you can trust Riku? Right. <laughs> Riku, are you sure you're not jealous of Sora? I remember this stuff. <laughs> Damn it, stop it! Stop hitting me! I remember when Xemnas was, like, just a teaser for Kingdom Hearts 2 when you fought him in Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. Mm -hmm. He showed up with a black hoodie on and he's got one la ah! ow, 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 ow. I remember that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, press the triangle! Yeah, as soon as I saw him do this move, I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna have to get the reaction command oh, ready. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't have Riku to help me out, though. Ow, whoa, 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 block, block, block. Ow, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. I was kind of hoping that they would bring that back where you get to see, like, him do all that flips and stuff, like, blocking every single one of them like a Jedi. Mm hmm. I mean, that was such a cool. It was a nice moment. Very satisfying ending to that game. <laughs> Yeah. Even that one mo brief moment you got to play as Riku during that fight. That was great. That was that was nice. Uh -huh. Sora! Take this! <laughs> it's over. So, 
yeah, with Xemnas, um, strategy-wise, does it look like I know what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to live. I'm trying to... All this, just remember, people, he, all he's doing is pushing buttons. <laughs> and, the, and the game does everything else. Eventually it becomes instinct. Right. You know what to look out for. You know what to dodge. Like, if you're an outsider looking at this, like, <laughs> I can't imagine how taxing on the brain it is. Like, how do you know what you're doing? The trick is we don't. <laughs> the trick is we don't. <laughs> we make we make it look good. <laughs> We're doing a lot of spectacle shots. Yeah! There, there you go. Cursed Keyblade. Who's left? Alright, so now that we've unlocked uh, the two final ones... Ooh. What? Huh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'll save that one, but who could that be? First, you must face yourself. You're not too far off. <laughs> Lock up. I know who it is. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> It's not Roxas, but... Xeon. Xeon. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's another one we got, like, Xeon. <laughs> yeah, Xeon. <laughs> yeah, before the dubbing came out, like, we saw the X-I-O-N. Xeon, Xeon, Xeon. <laughs> Xeon. <laughs> yeah, okay, now, Xeon was a pain in the padded ass. Why? Um, She's got one of those, I'm going to hit you all I want, and there's nothing you can do about it, and I'm just going to kill you because... Oh, fun. She's the Roxas fight, but worse. <laughs> Another thing, too, is that whenever they use their teleport, if you have the lock on, you have to put it back on because it immediately comes off. It does, and that, that can be a bit, bit of a pain in the ass. One mechanical feature that I didn't use a... Ah! <laughs> Stay away from me! <laughs> Oh, the, another thing that these enemies have, and she's incredibly guilty of it, too. Like in Kingdom Hearts 3, you, the, the enemies can stun you. Mm -hmm. Where, like, if they if they bash you on the head just right with one of their specific moves, you'll be stun-locked on the floor. It's kind of like that freezing move where if you're on ice, you're stuck there. Yeah. But it's it's just like that, but Sora will be kind of, like, in a haze. Mm -hmm. And I hate that so much. It's like a free... It's like a free kill-me move. Mm. And... Uh, whenever that happened to me, I'm just... That is so unfair. Yep. <laughs> it's like, isn't it bad enough that the fight is already ludicrously hard to begin with? You really gotta add in one of those mechanics where if they hit me, I'm stunned and I'm stuck and I can't do anything. I might as well put the controller down. Oh, yeah. Like, that that's uh, that's a bit too much. That's too harsh. <laughs> and I know someone probably say, well, if you... If you didn't hey, it's Kingdom Hearts 3, man. It's for the horror <laughs> Like, if you didn't get hit by it, it wouldn't be a problem. It's like, you <laughs> try it. <laughs> it's like, get it getting hit is kind of a, see does it look like it's easy to not get hit <laughs> come on guys <laughs> come on like she's so fast trying to just trying to end and also the thing there's a lot of things here yeah. <laughs> the thing it's like when we say the thing is bear in mind there's a lot of things <laughs> You can't just wail on these guys and knock them out of a combo. That's not how it works. You you can only do what I'm doing right now, when like comboing them. You can only do that when they leave that room open and that little window open. You can't just wail. I mean, you can do chip damage and wail on them as they're hitting on you, but they're just gonna no sell your moves the entire time. You'll hmm. you'll still be hurting them, right. but it's not gonna sh it's not gonna show on their bodies. So, like in, in the Ultima form, it's your best shot. At doing that chip damage because Sora is also so fast, right? But you're you're clearly you're gonna get hurt just as much. So you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. So the ideal strategy is to try to get those windows of opportunity so you can just nail them with combos. But it's so it's so rare that it happens. Your windows are so small; they rarely happen. And when they come out, there's a good chance you might miss them because you can't see them. Like that one. Like she could have got out of the way. Um, or you could be too far away that you, you just don't get the, the chance. 
But one mechanic that I did have to learn how to use, and I again, it's one of those things that you didn't really need to uh, try to do, was you have that sort of uh, ability from Dream Job Distance where you can use the shot lock uh, on them and like zoop mm -hmm. to, like to, towards them really fast. Right. And, and that works half the time, but that's a mechanic that you guys might also want to try to remember to, to remember that you have that. If an enemy is across the field and you know they're about to be wide open for an attack, you can use that shot lock and zoop right oh, to Oh, there she goes. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> that is one of the hardest fights. Mm. Like, she, is, she is crazy hard. Now, another, what I really love about all these fights is the remixes the the music that they play in the background for all of them are fantastic like nice. they like they would not be out of place if they were used for smash brothers okay uh so yeah i, w I would recommend listening to their soundtracks just on their own so you're not having to stress about fighting them well and there he is uh, here he is master Xehanort. master Xehanort. with the kai blade ah ah well, now you were here with me when I uh, originally did this. Yes, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so you know what kind of hell this is. But at least you listen to the voice of Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, that's a. F I love that Christopher Lloyd is. Well, I mean, it sucks that Master Xehanort's role is kind of cursed, and everybody who's played him has died. You, you, you told me about that. At least the Japanese actor also. Bruce well, yeah, apparently the English one died too. What? Lloyd. No, not Lloyd. Um, Leonard Nimoy, he yeah. played him first. He died. Yeah. Uh, the Japanese actor, from what I heard, I think he died. Okay. And apparently the new English voice actor that we had for him in Kingdom Hearts 3, he died too. Oh, damn. So now Christopher Lloyd is technically uh, the third English speaker to do Master Xehanort. Hmm. And uh, there's a... Well, let's just uh, hope for the best. So... <laughs> Yeah, I immediately could tell like like Xanor, Xanor sounds weird because they didn't they weren't upfront about the voice change. Eighty eight miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, so like when I was hearing him, it's like, why does he sound different? Is it the same guy? Is he is he just speaking louder or yelling a lot more? And but but yeah, and George was listening to me. He's like, that's different. Like that's Christopher Lloyd, isn't it? And I was like, it has to be. <laughs> so yeah, I could easily just throw a line from Back to the Future in here while while he's fighting me and like throwing out those big moves like. Hey, <laughs> so he throws those like pinwheel things at you <laughs> yes and if they hit you they're gonna freeze you and it hurts you and it's pretty much a stun lock if it freezes you you're pretty much done put the controller down you're never gonna get out of it right uh i would say xehanort master xehanort he's while it looks like he's one of the harder fights he can be if you make it so but he's also one of the easier if that makes sense because you see his moves coming right Avoiding them and dodging them, that's the hard part. But at least you can see them coming. Right. right. Like, there were plenty of other fights, especially with uh, Shion as the example, where she's so goddamn fast <laughs> <laughs> that I never... I I was lucky if I could see him coming. Uh, it, it, so, But yeah, see, there's a lot of telegraphing here. Like, you see those things coming up before they fire at you. Right. You know what he's about to do. Uh, so you, can, you have that split second to prepare for it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it's around here at, at his health bar where this is where things can get a little iffy. Uh, it's not too hard to get him this low on, a health, on his health bar, but it's at this point when he starts throwing all this crap at you. <laughs> this, is where the, this is where the match is either going to go in your favor this or you it, break the controller <laughs> and leave the room. <laughs> this is where I'm you done break, with this game. <laughs> yeah, this is where you break your new 4K TV. <laughs> like, <laughs> You throw that controller, you smash it right into it. See, back in my day, you could throw controllers at the TV, and the only thing that would break is your controller. Cause yeah, the, the TVs were... <laughs> there were mountains back in the day. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm alive! Thank goodness for potions. <laughs> Going with the ultimate weapon. Uh, whoa! Whoa! Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Like, I always know after those giant lasers come out, I always know he's going to appear right in the middle of the battlefield and be wide open for attack. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it you are going to die a lot trying to figure out a pattern with all of these fights. And, yeah, it can be a little disheartening when you die repeatedly. But just remember that's part of the strategy is learning the pattern, learning what works, trying to utilize mechanics, what works, what doesn't. That's right. When, when, is he, when does he let his guard down? Right. Like, okay, so he hit me with that attack. Does he, leave, does, does he leave himself open when that attack is done? Does he? Don't know. Can I block this attack? What can I block this attack with? 
Uh, can I counter it with something? Can I use, can I avoid it? Can I use my magic to stop him at any point? Rage mode. <laughs> at this point, I'm just like, screw it. I, don't <laughs> I try not to go into the rage modes too much, but it's, at this point, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> well, it's kind of a hit or, it's kind of a, you know, high risk, high reward kind of move. Yeah, anti-form always kind of was. It, 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 it It's powerful, but it, it's very much a glass cannon. Yes. So at this point, I'm like, you know, I, I use it. The one thing I never wanted to use in the entire series was the Kupo coin. I don't have a fault against anybody who wants to use the Kupo coin. If you remember what that does, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it, it instantly revives you. Like it's if, a Tanuki you know. suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Kupo coin immediately brings you back from death if they kill you, so you have another chance. You don't um, need it because you're about to beat them right now. Yeah, there goes Master Xehanort. And we thought our troubles were done. <laughs> so that takes care of Master Xehanort, but we still have Yozora. Yeah, I had no idea who this guy was, but then you said the the game from Toy Story 4. Like, all right, he's the, the main character from that game. The uh, Basically, that game in Toy Story 4 is basically a parody of... Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy 15. 15. I have that game, by the way. Yeah, AKA, <laughs> AKA Final Fantasy Versus 13. Because, the original, right. Because yeah, he was working on the original version of that. Yeah, right? it, it was a passion project for Nomura, but for some reason he kind of got... I don't know if he got booted out of the project or he was forced out of the project, mm. but he had to leave Final Fantasy 15 probably due to creative differences or something that happened. Um... But that's a game I need to get back into. I enjoyed the hell out of that game. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, Final Fantasy 15 is clearly a game that no more. 15, anyway, yeah. Yeah, 13, 15, versus 13 or Final Fantasy 15. See, now this is where I, this is the only way I could really find effectively. I'm going to cheese this fight and I'm going to get held with under the sea. Ariel is there your she <laughs> is. <laughs> Ariel is your best friend in this fight. fight yeah. Because <laughs> she's. What is she even doing? <laughs> well, you are with her. You're diving in and out of the water. All right. And the the effect is long, and you're practically invincible when it happens. And Yozora is ungodly fast. He is he he is practically un he, he, he. There's no question about it. He's unfair. Ariel really is one of the mainstays of Kingdom Hearts. I'm glad they brought her back for this one. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> You gotta cheese this fight. Yeah. Swim the swim, we'll dance and we'll play. Now it's very easy. Come on and just take a chance and shake your fin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Japanese. <laughs> just, Rage mode. Just a touch. Does it doesn't take too much to pop, pop, pop. So yeah, I know you can beat Yozora without using uh, Ariel. Ariel was one of the mechanics that I actually figured out on my own because I lost to this guy so many times that I, it, that's what happens. You lose to these people so many times, you be, you, you, you start become experimental. Exactly, you, you experiment with everything that you have. Like okay, we have these. There summons. has to be something here that can work against him <laughs> or something to help. Right. <laughs> like so yeah, we have all these summons that we his never whole use. Thing when he goes into that triangle is he steals your power and it basically and it's not game over. Over, but man, it gets really difficult because you don't have a keyblade now. During yes, that Yozora has got some bullcrap moves. Now, here's what's scarier about Yozora that I've heard. I have never seen it happen, but I heard if you go into this fight with a Kupo coin, you are in trouble because he will steal the Kupo coin uh, and uh, use it to bring back half of his whole health. Uh, uh, and I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> well, it's a good thing I've never had one, but yeah. no items ever <laughs> yeah and that's another thing that he can do like he's got so many broken abilities he's got that move where yes he'll steal your keyblade and leave you defenseless where he'll until he gives it back which will probably mean never mm. um he's also got a move where if he if he catches you in a beam he will steal your items mm -hmm. and use those on himself against you as well so he'll steal your items and use those to bring his health back it's crazy how unfair this guy is like mm. Uh, the only thing he has almost no openings right like, the, he's got like maybe one or two but they're so rare that you're gonna spend n a good maybe five minutes just blocking all of well, his I attacks think that's the waiting. thing that's also frustrating about these Kingdom Hearts boss fights it does feel like you spend like 90% blocking and running and dodging you just have to wait for that one opening where you can finally take advantage of it yeah and with Yozora it's up it, it's, it's that cranked up to 20 Mm. He's so un. He's he, <laughs> the amount of he is so he is so <laughs> is crazy. He is so he is so. 
So yes, so. <laughs> uh, so yes, by experimenting, I found that well, like all this dodging is great, Bill, but you're gonna have to hurt him eventually. Well, I am. That's what. <laughs> yeah, but it's very, doing. very little though. Yeah, I, I will take it because, like, with Ariel, he can't touch me. <laughs> right. Back to rage mode. <laughs> yeah, like, I will take it. With, with Ariel, he might be open by the time the attack is done, and Ariel's attack it hurts him. It does chip damage. It does. <laughs> But it hurts! <laughs> now it's really hurting. This rage mode is just... Yes, like, I will take every advantage I get. Like, yeah, if you ever get an opening like that, you are lucky. There's one opening uh, that you have a chance to hurt him, but you have to block one of his attacks successfully in order for the opening to stick. And it's when he actually throws his sword at you and it starts attacking you by itself. If you manage to block that, he'll be wide open for a retaliation move, which I'm doing right now. You can attack him. But you can only attack him for so long before he's like, not a chance, or backs out. And then you're on the defensive for a good five minutes again before you might get another shot at another opening. So Ariel, I found, was a fantastic way to mitigate that. Like, because he can't touch you. You're like, like, there's nothing he can do to me. There you go. Like he'll he'll be he'll be shooting his gun laser. Like look at all it, that. It, stuff. It's yeah. funny that you're basically fighting Noctis. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's doing everything he can. He's got lasers. He's got he's got the entire environmental advantage with that meteor thing going on around me that's supposed to be sucking me in or pushing me away. He's got all this stuff going on around me, and he can't touch me during the time that I'm stuck with Ariel. And Ariel's summon lasts so long that it's perfect for it, mm -hmm. and it still damages everything, even if it's chip damage, even if he's not. Even if he's no selling the move, it's still hurting him, and it's a wide area of effect. Right. So I can't like the fact that I found Ariel to work so well was a godsend. I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> so again, finally, we found the summoning me mechanic. Like, how many times in Kingdom Hearts games have you ever really used the summons and having needed to? Right. Um, Critical mode in Kingdom Hearts Three was probably the first time I found that the summons to be useful. Like, Simba was actually useful during Monstropolis. But yeah, here I can think of no better fight to show how Ariel is absolutely devastating to Yozora's strategy. I mean, yeah, you still have to try. You still have to know how Yozora works, and as little as that might help. The power of Disney! You can't overcome it. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> We're gonna own you, Noctis! <laughs> so... One of us. One of us. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, even with all that, he still managed and hurt me. So I'm trying to get the elixirs on there. Get the. No, he's got armor mode. <laughs> but you know what? That's fine. He can't touch me. You can't touch me. <laughs> Take advantage of all the free time you can with Ariel. Get really good with Ariel. Uh, so I'm sure I'm not the only person to have discovered this. But sure you are, because you're a genius. No. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are other... You're the best Kingdom Hearts player in the world! You've won tournaments! <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure there are other players out there You're the who best, bro. You're just kicking his ass, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm the best. Yeah, I didn't need you. He was holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> he was holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> so... Yeah, it seems like Ariel and Rage Mode are the only things that are really working against this guy right now. Yeah, like, because look at that. He's so fast. It, it's un, it's unfair. I'm just going to call it. Like, Yozora was designed to be un, unfair. Well, it's like uh, when you fought the... Uh, oh, damn it. Oh, there it is. Finally caught you. There goes your Keyblade. It's now Data. It is gone. <laughs> it's mine now. Damn. It's mine Oh, damn it. Well, it's like when you fought the living armor at uh, the end of uh, Final Mix or what it was. Where you, oh, the lingering will the armor. Lingering, yeah. lingering will armor, yeah. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Yeah, that... Yozora and lingering will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and I know that you can cheese that fight, too. I guess what you consider Ariel... Uh, Ariel's kind of a cheesy, a cheesy way to beat him. Because it's like, a oh, real man wouldn't use Ariel. They're like, screw you. I'll take every advantage I can get. Uh, <laughs> a game that forces the player to utilize all of its mechanics is, in my eyes, and I mentioned this in the review, good, a good, game. good game design. Otherwise, yeah. why is it there in the first place? Why is it there in the first place? So yeah, that was the attack that I just mentioned. If you can block that sword, he's wide open for a retaliation. Quick step. Yes, and use the quick step to get to him. But it's so rare that he does that move, and what's even more rare is that you'll block it, because <laughs> you'll never see it coming. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm super stressed that I've got him this low on health, and I'm waiting for the match to come back so I can use Ariel again. There we go. Under the sea, bitch! Yeah! <laughs> you can't touch me! You can't touch me! 
And like Ariel's, her, her damage can be devastating to any enemy if they're right on top of her. So if I'm lucky and he appears, see, look at that, boom! Yeah, yeah. smash the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, if he's right under me, it can it can hurt. Damn mermaid! <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Taking all the seriousness out of this fight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't care. Help me, Ariel. <laughs> Oh, 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 she's gone now. Oh, crap. At this point, it's like, I don't... I, 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 I want to beat him. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm just dodging everywhere. I don't want him to hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit. Don't hit. No, no. <laughs> That's not fair. He's too fast. That's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. I don't think so. <laughs> no, stay away. Oh no, no. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's your only chance, really. <laughs> it's your saving grace. Thank you, Ariel. Yes, we... your services were greatly appreciated. Oh. <laughs> There you go. What would I give? <laughs> <laughs> so there you guys have it. That was our experience defeating all of these. Oh yeah, and here's our here's the good ending. I guess. I guess that my powers aren't needed yet. Powers aren't needed yet. What do you mean? Never mind. Don't give me that smile. <laughs> Aw. Sora's still dead, y'all. No. Oh. <laughs> and this is when it was pretty much obvious, like... Like, oh, come on. Shot for shot. Right out of the trailer. Yeah. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy versus 13. <laughs> Impressive. Is it not? Of course, he'd be in a car. <laughs> yeah, it's like the regalia from 15. <laughs> like, yeah, the regalia. <laughs> I love that car. <laughs> I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this for real? Maybe we're all inside a video game console somewhere. Makes sense to me. So yeah, Dylan Sprouse, one of the twins from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. All right, cool. <laughs> so, an oath to return, Kingdom Hearts. The next DLC, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so there you guys have it. Uh, we hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you enjoyed uh, this content. I hope uh, something in this video helped you defeat uh, some of those other bosses or at least gave you something to listen to while you were desperately trying to fight for your own lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see you next time. Any last words, Gene? Uh, you guys take care of each other. Have a good night, y'all! Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.